All right, all right. Sleep Token have released Take Me Back to Eden. Dangerous disposition, somehow refracted in light, reflected in sound. I'm coiled up like a venomous serpent tangled in your... Which is the third and final album in the trilogy of Sundowning. This place will become your tomb, and now take me back to Eden. And my most anticipated album of 2023. You know, sm- small band sleep token. We, we, we don't need to talk about them, right? Everything's fine. <laughs> They've been huge, man. This year has been unreal for them. Their top 10 most popular songs are all off this album. They're at 2.6 million monthly. It's wild. Sold out Wembley Arena, which is 10,000 <laughs> under 10 minutes. I mean, the explosion of this band has been both unreal and extremely justified. A hundred percent agree. Where do we even start with this? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. This is your segment. Should I get my thoughts out of the way? No, you're going to, you can chime in when it. <laughs> We all know what you're going to say. <laughs> um, yeah, let's build up suspense to what I'm going to say, actually. Yes, let's build it up. Okay, um, I have so many theories about this album, um, and none are concrete. I have one that's like 90% concrete in my head. Um, but I feel like the my, my interpretation is... Or... That's one of the reasons I'm so attached is because I honestly don't know what this album is about it in full. Like there's so many like little nuances and everything can have like multiple meanings. Mm. Um and it's all recorded by one guy and a drummer, which is crazy insane. <laughs> this album does a lot of genre bending. Yes. And in a way that works, <laughs> <laughs> I guess they've always been kind of experimental, but this is bringing that to like a 12. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I, I guess I'll go into track by track. I don't know if you want to chime in with me, Derek, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give my entire theory about the album which is going to take forever (laughs) so i think first of all i'm going to a little background about like sundowning and tomb um i think sundowning album is about the love of vessel's life i'll name her eden in this it's going to be her name throughout this okay Yeah, yeah and between Sundowning and Tomb, uh, this love either dies or leaves him. Not sure which, but I think she dies. That's my guess. Okay. And uh, Vessel's left with an immense amount of guilt and sadness, and he that leads to the events of This Place Will Become Your Tomb. And then after we get to... Vessel trying to fill the void with Take Me Back to Eden, which starts with Chokehold, which I believe is him finding a new love. So this is a completely different person. And immediately infatuated by her. What? What did I just hear? What was that? (laughs) Well, did Jake just meow? No, I was was opening a drawer. (laughs) (laughs) I heard a drawer. And I was like, (laughs) (laughs) Jake, um, I, think you, I think you need to keep your cat out of your drawer, please. <laughs> I'm at my mom's house. There's not a single pet in this house. There's five in the other house. <laughs> so, so Chokehold is is new person, completely infatuated, and um, quote unquote, he'll make it through stormy seas and mountain peaks of their relationship, um, even if it hurts him, as said in the song, very literally. Um, the summoning is more or less the same, except just further along in the relationship, he's offering his body, his flesh and bone, uh, calls her his love in the, in the bridge of the song. And we get 
some slight hints of the relationship being toxic in here. Uh, granite is where it's evident that the relationship is toxic, mm. and um, then new love is refusing to communicate his problem problems with him. And I interpret secondhand smoke and glass on the street as like she's using drugs, or this love is using drugs. It doesn't have to necessarily be a she. I'm going to call her a she in this. Mm. <laughs> um, you say you want me, but you don't know. Yeah. You say you want me, but you know I'm not what you need, but I am. Basically, he's saying she doesn't, she thinks she doesn't need him, but he believes that she needs him in order to. I mean, live more or less. Live, yeah. Very um, codependent. Uh, and he, yeah, codependent. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But um, he, he deals with all the abuse and puts up with her. And Aquarija is kind of a continuation of that. I feel like he's still believing that he's meant to be with her. And uh, like he's the, the greatest and he's the perfect one for her. And he compares himself to gold in this song. I think the bridge where he's like, um, when I'm done dancing to alarm bells, this is like notification sounds and like phone calls. That's my interpretation of it. Aquarija is one of the ones that I'm kind of iffy on, but I think that's what I, what he's getting at here. Vor is where he realizes he's not happy and he's staying with her basically for sex pleasure. Mm -hmm. Um, and they continue on a downward spiral and quote the song. Are you in pain? Like I am, um, ascensionism, I think is new territory for us. (laughs) Um, I think this is, the finale in this event with this new lover. I think in this song, he is questioning what went wrong and reflecting their short time together. He's, he's figured out that this is not meant to be. And ultimately he quote unquote ascends or moves on and breaks up with her. You can notice this by reading the first verse or intro actually, which is done in the same style as the the last verse. So I'll read it here. Well, I know what you want from me. You want someone to be your reflection, your bitter deception, setting you free. So you take what you want and leave. That's the, the beginning. And then towards the end of the song, it's like a, it's like a complete opposite shift. And I know what you want from me. You want the same as me. My redemption, eternal ascension, setting me free. So I'll take what I want and leave. And then he leaves. And I think this is where the album goes to like a totally different point. And he's reflecting on Eden. He's missing his relationship with Eden. And he reflects on... A moment they had where I I think Are You Really Okay takes place before Atlantic, between Tomb, or between Sundowning and Tomb. I'm going all over the place. This is where I go all over the place, by the way. (laughs) Um, And Eden is self-harming, and eventually, well, actually, she's self-harming, and Vessel doesn't know how to deal with the trauma, with her trauma, and... Eventually she kills herself and it feels like he's to blame. And then the events of Atlantic happen, or I guess all of two. The apparition is dealing with her ghost. Um, seeing her in dreams. There's like this lyric, the lyrics in this are very literal. I think I feel, um, I was going to say, did you mean like, like metaphorically dealing with her ghost or like literally like, she's no, like, like she's, he, yeah, she's right. in his, in his his dreams. Okay, I'm with it. And um, I don't have the lyrics pulled up, but there's many lyrics like... Um, oh, God, I'm going to pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> I will say so far, while you pull that up, this is making a lot of sense, and I'm rocking with your theory so far. <laughs> Just wait. No, um, shit. All right, my bad. 
Uh, oh, it, it gets so, even. It okay. Gets even so yeah, here from here, Jesus. He's uh, hijack heaven with another memory now. So he's having memories, and um, I just split what's left of the burning silence. So he's left alone. Um, you turn up in the reveries of my mind. I wake up in a suicide frenzy. Loaded dreams still leave me feeling empty. Um, what's next? Do you wish that you love me? Is a self reflection. He's unhappy with himself. I went into this more in the last episode. I'm not gonna go much further than that. Um, rain is where I'm lost. Agreed. I do not know who this song is about. The best that I could figure it out because I, I you know, I've listened to this album a lot less than you, <laughs> but I've I've thought at least similarly, and I think that it's one more desperate attempt to try and not necessarily forget, but move on from Eden. And to me, what it is, is that Rain and Euclid go, I, that's even how you pronounce it, go hand in hand, yeah, you said it right. where rain is trying to find in another person an escape from the memories of eden mm -hmm. which fails and which is where you get taken back to eden because you realize like you know like i, I just yeah. missed this person and that euclid being in contrast to a lot of the rest of the album almost sounding more hopeful that it's mm -hmm. okay I have tried to use women relationships and sex to move on from this person rather than taking the time to live in introspection and accept and move on from the times that I wish I still had. And it's this sort of contrast between I, I found escapes from the pain of losing Eden in all the wrong ways. And the reason that Euclid is this beautiful callback closer to the rest of this whole saga is because it's Vessel or the character in this whole story finally realizing that they can't escape this pain by projecting it or into other people or by using other people to escape it. And it's only with viewing these this loss and these lost memories as a positive thing and moving forward on their own through their own means that they can truly be free from that mm. and i agree i think rain feels the most out of place but in the story that i feel like it could be another memory so, yeah that could also be yes i hadn't thought about that but you're right that because the, yeah, if they reflect and then after all that positive reflection about like rain down on me, then he's like, Yeah, take me back to Eden. this is who I want to be with. Because Eden or Take Me Back to Eden title track, I mm -hmm. is I feel like it's very simply put, takes place two days after Ascensionism. It's because in verse two, it's like, Yeah, I spit blood and when I wake up, sink porcelain, stain choking up brain matter. And makeups just two days since the mainframe went dent went down and i'm still messed up room feels like a meat freezer and i dangle in like cold cuts miss calls answer phones this is this is his uh lover from chokehold to ascensionism calling him um for people i just don't trust that's her mirror talk fake love that's him referencing do you wish that you love me but um but i'll take a founder of your flesh before you take a piece of my face up so Again, he doesn't want to be with this person. And then I think in verse three, he comes to like a realization. It's like, I guess it goes to show, does it not, that we've got no idea, no idea what we've got until we lose it. And no amount of self sought fury will bring back the glory of innocence. I feel like he's trying to fill the, or he, he is aware that he tried to fill the void with this other person that. Eden left, and then he wants to go back to Eden. <laughs> mm. And then, yeah, I think you you encapsulated Euclid exactly how it is. I think the one thing I think is interesting is 
I think it could also be like a cycle. Hmm. Like it could just repeat, which is because the whole the whole trilogy. I'm gonna bring in album covers here. Sun down, sun goes down, moon comes out. That's Eden. It affects the tides of the water, which is this place will become your tomb. And I feel like they were very literal with this because a lot of these songs and including the album were released on very i'm going this is like real conspiracy theory shit okay they were released released on various cycles of the moon for example the summoning was released on a full moon and the album was released on a new moon um but i think what also brings me back to this, the cycle is the the lyrics leading back into the night does not belong to God. Um, and sundowning being like, sundowning is like when you forget, like it's when dementia patients forget at night, basically. <laughs> I think that's how it works. Um, and he, and yeah, like he he just forgets and he does it over and over again is basically my tinfoil hat theory. <laughs> I'm wrong. Um, I think that like the, the release I, cycle being on moon cycles is Sleep Token is a type of band that would absolutely I, wait for that. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Um another thing that is even more tinfoil hat is why is the summoning called the summoning? I don't know. But my theory is they knew this song was going to blow up and the summoning is bringing all the new fans. Because <laughs> that's the song that <laughs> I did it. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if that's true, that's bold as hell and I respect the fuck out of it. <laughs> right? Like, it's, it's way too big brain. <laughs> yeah, I've gone into lyrics. Sonically, this thing is like nothing i ever heard before absolutely and there's so many moments like rain the i'm coiled up like a venomous serpent that line into the rest of the song oh my god um <laughs> <laughs> oh what else there's there's just so many moments that i think yeah Euc euclid is my favorite track for sure mine as well absolutely yeah Without a doubt. It's just it's just so perfect. I if Take Me Back to Eden is the Pokemon League, Euclid is the post game rival fight. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. That is my <laughs> crazy theory. I think I'm mostly right on not maybe not with the summoning thing and but that's my interpretation. And I love this band. I think this is their magnum opus. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Yeah. To me, I think that that is indicative. Because, like, look, there is a world, right, where you're entirely wrong. You were still able to get that from this album and this trilogy. And I think it speaks volumes to the complexities and intricacies within this album and this project as a whole. And I think that that, to me, is a lot of the reason why this album has become as popular as it is. I have heard some complaints from certain bald music reviewers. <laughs> no, we're not that, even going to give them the light of day, dude. Well, I think that I, having, having listened to, to that review and, and gripes with what I would consider otherwise a perfect album, I think that there is a lot of talk of it maybe being overproduced. And I would agree to an extent, but I think that it does work to serve the purpose of this album in the capacity that we've understood it. I yeah. also want to say that I do think that that is a valid criticism at times, that there are moments where you, like, you can hear vessel breathing, right? On the section where it, oh, that's something I actually wanted to mention. Yeah. That is sick. <laughs> it is. And I think that it is a, a production choice to bring that forward, which could lean into the overproduced side of things, but at the same time, it makes it feel even more raw. 
which it, I it, it feels it, it it also what's the word genuine that's the word mm-hmm. it feels genuine i think my one agreement with that is on the apparition where it's that electronic the dun 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 yep. dun, dun, dun to me it almost feels a little out of place that it sounds i don't see any problem with vessels of voice being overproduced at any point because i feel like it fits whatever the song and album is trying to achieve that is one moment on this whole album that i feel takes me out of what is otherwise a perfect immersive experience i do not understand any hate for this album I don't. I think I genuinely think that if you cannot find a song to enjoy on here, there is something genuinely wrong with you. <laughs> I, and I, I, I mean that completely. I mean, like it's it's funny to say, but like I, I mean it because there is way too much good happening here and way too much genre variation. That if you don't enjoy any part of this or any song, you desperately need to expand your musical vocabulary because what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> like this even even a part of a song because uh, there's yeah, exactly. like, tons of genre bending and to for some people i've seen some people outside of <laughs> the melon uh complain about genre bending in this how how could you possibly complain about what i would say is the greatest genre bending album in the scene since beautiful oblivion dropped by issues in 20 or 2019 mm-hmm. rather you don't get albums that work like this every year let alone every couple of years this is cornerstone scene defining other bands wish they could execute this this well mm-hmm. shame on anybody I feel like who, who, who hates on this. And even, you know, the Anthony, you know, fuck it. Anthony Fantana, right? <laughs> I think he is, it is fine to, cause that dude listens to a lot of fucking music, right? It mm-hmm. is fine to, to not, or to feel like this is too over-processed or whatever compared to the type of metal that, that you enjoy. Even in listening to a lot of music, I think he needs to expand his taste. Because I listen to a lot of fucking music too, and you don't see me being a prick about it. Like, <laughs> no, I, I think I, it's I just, just it's it's just not for him. I don't think he hate. I don't think he hates it. I think I think he was harsh on his his review. Yes, um, there is a difference between not enjoying it and calling music like this uninspired and mm-hmm. and bland. And I think that that does a disservice to to this band and to this album as a whole. And I think that this is honestly one of the most compelling albums to come out of the scene let alone that i've ever heard and you know i i don't i just got done saying like oh he listens to a lot of i listen to a lot of fucking music too and this among like easy 1500 2000 albums i've heard is one of the most interesting and if you're not paying attention to sleep token yet then you absolutely need to be for this everything that jacob said alone right because <laughs> even if it's wrong the fact that you can pull that out of an album and trilogy is unbelievable. It's just a, a phenomenal album and an incredible project that we talked about a lot of bands this episode about that they deserve blowing up. This band in particular does because the talent in Vessel alone, let alone mm-hmm. in the rest of the band, is you mean, you mean the drummer? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the drummer and everybody else who gets brought along for tour. <laughs> I feel like we haven't touched on like like instrumental elements enough and we've only been like focused on the lyrics but I can jump um, in on this part. Okay. Chokehold, best song on the album. I love the heavy guitar riffs in that song. The guitar riffs that come in at the end of Granite, that shit is sick as hell. Nice. Uh Rain pretty fucking awesome i've only heard that song like two or three times but pretty fucking awesome (laughs) uh do you wish that you loved me very simple one of my favorite songs on the album um okay good take jake in in general i think that there is a lot to like there's more to like about the instrumentation on this album than the vocal delivery is that a sin that's a take 
Because, like, I think Vor would be a much better song if Vessel just did not scream. Fair. Same with the summoning. I think Vor... Mm. I think uh, both both serve their own purpose, and Vor has honestly been the biggest grower on me. I think I didn't like it at all as a song. I, I, it as their only I music, agree. But... Vor is still my least favorite song on the album, if you can't tell. <laughs> That's expected. I feel like that's very, very expected. I also want to say that I think that there's a lot of genty, proggy instrumentation and a lot of prog song structure on here, especially in terms of taking back to Eden and a lot of the longer songs on here. Yeah. Mm. I can understand where that would be a point of contention for some people listening to it, that it may not be like their me. thing. Yeah. And even, honestly, even for me, that I feel like at times it hurts a little bit of my replayability on this album that it is so long or some songs are so long because it's hard to listen to, you know, like in the car, maybe. Like, I'll listen to a couple songs off the album in the car, don't get me wrong, but I don't. I rarely have one-hour long car rides, <laughs> right? Or yeah. instances where I have an hour to just sit down and appreciate this album. And so I think that it can be a struggle at times to fully get a grasp on this album, considering its length or the length of some of the songs. But at the same time, it's just an incredible album. Like it, I, even if I don't have the time necessarily to listen to it all the way through, I still want to, I want yeah. to take that time to do it because there's so much to unpack. There's so much to enjoy instrumental vocally. I think that the inclusion of like, trap beats on here is yeah. a phenomenal artistic choice that i wouldn't Agreed. totally really expect unexpected to yeah. i don't remember which songs had it but i remember they were good uh i believe it's it's ascensionism the apparition rain, rain and take me back to yeah, eden okay. yeah, yeah. I think and they all cool. save those as non-signals which i thought was very interesting mm, mm -hmm. i think it i also think that the heavy moments hit harder because they're so rare absolutely Especially the end of Take Me Back to Eden, I feel, mm. is, is one of those moments in particular. And I like that it, the trap beats, I mean, on Ascensionism, that we, they were saved for singles because not only is this something that you get to experience as new on the album, by the time you get to the others that have it, you're like, oh, yeah, this makes sense because we had it earlier. You know, it just it mm. helps with the cohesion of an album that. That's, that's one thing that I do want to mention is that this album feels very cohesive, which is strange for an album that has so many ideas I, and concepts I feel being like, executed. See, I feel like it's less cohesive than Tomb. I agree. I think Tomb is the most cohesive album. And I think, I think this is a little more cohesive than Sundowning. I could be wrong about that. I guess, I guess it's up to inter interpretation, but... Sleep Token nails closers. They do. Absolutely. Missing Limbs. Oh, chef's Kiss. Probably my second favorite Sleep Token song behind <laughs> Euclid now. I will say um, Rain is still my favorite off the album. Um, some of the ones that I enjoyed were Do You Wish That You Love Me and The Apparition. Um, nice. The Summoning as well, instrumentally. Um, I did not like Vessel's uncleans in this um the weaker tracks for me being bore and take me back to eden yeah i think justin and i are very much on the same page here mm -hmm. i yeah. added i the only songs i didn't add were the summoning vor and take me back to eden which are the three songs that were the heaviest on this album you added ascensionism though i did good on you i i only added the the three or four that i talked about because those are the ones i knew i would replay think that for everybody's sake and for jake's poor editing sake we should probably wrap it up but yes i think that we could we... talk a lot longer and that is a testament <laughs> we'll... to this album we'll, we'll see you in december yeah, we'll, we'll see, see we'll december. see you in december for part two i'm not i'm uh, even hiding it there's no point it's no. Uh, december I mean, we'll see you yes you will see at least two of us in december <laughs> I may not love this album. I think, like, on my doc, I have it at, like, 7, 7.2 out of 10, somewhere around there. I still enjoyed this album more than I expected to, going from the singles. And I am not nearly as invested in the lore and the lyricism and all of that compared to you two, Derek and Jacob. But I will agree that 
I am really glad that this band is succeeding to the same degree that they are because they deserve it. And it's great for the scene in general that a band like this is succeeding. And there are also just some really good songs on here. Some of them drag on a little bit long for my taste. And yes, that's part of the story and all that. But I'm just not as invested in all of the lore as the people that are. (laughs) And can appreciate those longer songs that really take you into the story. So, Yeah. As an outsider coming in, I enjoyed what I listened to. But I'm not as committed as... Some of the crazy people. Jacob. I'm taking away the songs that I like, and I am. Everyone that loves this album, I'm gonna. You can all love this album as much as you want. I'm not gonna take that away from you. It's just not fully for me. Better review than Fantano right here on the High Absolutely. Mind Podcast. Absolutely.